Okay. So hello everyone and welcome to the PhD seminar series. I hope you are all having a lovely summer and that you're not suffering this second heat wave too much. Today's speaker is Jason Sun and he'll be talking about vector valued control variates. His supervisors are Francois Javier Briol and Jean Gao Xue. Um, so thank you, Jason, and you can start whenever you're ready. Okay, thank you for a nice uh, uh, introduction. Uh, so today, today my talk will focus on vector value control rights, which is uh, one part of my upgrade. Uh, uh, because I don't have, because I don't think I have enough time to introduce another piece, uh, another part of my upgrade work here today. So this is a joint work with Accenture Barb uh, and my supervisor FX Briar. So let's uh, recap uh, the definition of the scalar value uh, expectation. So uh, we have a R valued function F and uh, suppose F is some distribution of interest. And what we are interested in is, 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 sorry, is this uh, expectation. And examples of these expectations include molar evidence, um, posterior mean and base factor. So in, for, for example, in the case of more evidence, the integrand would be the likelihood of X uh, given theta, while the distribution of interest uh, will have a PDF like uh, pi theta here. So a uh, vector valued expectation is a genera generalization of the scalar valued uh, expectation. Uh, this is when we have an RT valued function, integrand function F, such that for every for each x, uh, f x is R t value, and the goal is to approximate uh, the vector of the following expectations. Um, this this pi uh, is formally known as a vector probability distribution. So you can see that for each component of this vector, we have uh, a distinct uh, expectation of interest. So why we should care about uh, vector valued expectation? because it happens uh, in many cases uh, that uh, multiple expectations are related uh, either through the integrands F or through the distributions of interest. And, uh, and, at, and meanwhile, we want to utilize transfer or multitask learning to jointly estimate those uh, expectations uh, and achieve a better accuracy. So here is an illustration example um, selected from uh, South et al, uh, this paper. So you can see I'm plotting two uh, functions uh, here and uh, both of them, they share a very similar shape. And also they have very similar, they have the same decreasing and increasing area. Um, the distribution of interest uh, uh, can also be different. Uh, for instance, these two distributions are not necessary to be the same. So we will return to this uh, toy example later and uh, more examples uh, in the area of multi-fidelity modeling uh, will be included later as well. Okay. So general solution to these expectations are Monte Carlo estimators. Um, basically we have a collection of samples uh, from the touch distribution and we take the average of FX size um, um, however, this uh, Monte Carlo estimator is known to have large variance. So it, uh, 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 it normally to achieve a, a reasonable accuracy, uh, the number of sample sets need to be reasonably large. Um, uh, luckily, we have a post a processing solution called control rights estimator. Um, so it has this for, it has this form. So basically we need to subtract uh, tilde G from the integrand f, uh, and then we take this average. Uh, because we have minus some weird function here, so we need to add back the add, add back its expectations here. So uh, this tilde g is called uh, control rights uh, in the literature. Uh, to make this estimator a valid estimator, for uh, we need to make sure this uh, expectation to be tractable. Um, that's, that's the key point of the control right. One of the key points of the control right. So these control right estimators are known to lead to significant variance reduction. So this means we can, uh, have, 
more accurate estimators, even when the sample size is small. Uh, there are actually two key steps in control rights. So the first step is how to construct uh, the fixed main functions class G, uh, such that for every function in this class, we always uh, have uh, its, expectation, its, its expectation to be beta. So for instance, this beta can be zero. So this actually can be easily done by uh, using the Stein operator. Uh, I will introduce it later. Then the second key step is to select the, to select the optimal uh, G star from this uh, zero main function class. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So uh, in in this section, I will provide necessary background for the uh, for the vector value control rights. So let's start with the uh, uh, Langevin style operator. So a sign class of distribution pi is a class of functions u uh, associate to an op operator s pi. This pi is referred as a sign operator, uh, such that the following sign identity holds. So this uh, this equation here basically tells us for every function u uh, in this function class, once it has been applied and start a sign operator, it always has its expectation to be zero. And one of the the most common commonly used sign operator in literature, perhaps is the Langevin sign operator. So now basically we, now in this case, we will have a RD value function, uh, a mapping from RD to RD. And uh, this Langevin sign operator has, uh, has this kind of form. So in this form, you can see that uh, it is not necessary to know the normalizing constant of the charge distribution pi. Um, this is uh, this is great because normally in valence stats, uh, the normalizing constant is uh, is often intractable or impractical impractical to compute. Uh, but of course, we also have other popular po uh, options of sign operators. Uh, we refer you to these two papers uh, to see other choices. Um, since our method is uh, kernel based control rights. So I think control functional is a most relevant. So I will briefly introduce uh, control functional here as well. Um, so control functional is a class of control rights based on reproducing kernel capital spaces. So the most important uh, contribution is it introduced a so-called sign kernel. Uh, it takes the following form. You can see that it involves the derivatives of the kernel K and also the score function here. So this Stein kernel um, uh, also have other applications, uh, for instance, uh, in the field of, of kernel Stein discrepancies, but I will not cover uh, them here because they are uh, not re relevant to control rights here. So the control function estimator often takes two forms. So uh, the first form is an unbiased estimator, while the second form is a biased estimator. So why, um, the reason we will have two versions of these, uh, two versions of control function estimators is because at, uh, suppose we have a collection of samples as, uh, and, we, and, we can, and we want to split them to X and that. So we will optimize uh, the control right. Uh, that, that means we are training our control rights uh, and selection, select, selecting the optimal control rights using this X. Well, we are constructing unbiased estimator uh, on this Z. So basically this unbiased estimator, we can only get this unbiased estimator when we split the data in two parts. But, uh, uh, but if we do not want to split the data in two parts and uh, all the sample, the sample size is too small, um, we can use this biased estimator. That's, this beta hat basically means we, we is meaning we are optimizing the control rights using all the data we have, and this beta hat is an estimate uh, of the of the expectation of interest. Okay. So the main choice of the Stein class uh, you study in your work is uh, vector valued uh, reproducing kernel helpless spaces. So. Uh, so I will give a definition of VVRKHS, uh, but you will see it has a very similar, uh, uh, it has very similar properties to the standard scalar value RKHS. 
So a vector valued RKHS, uh, HK, is a space of functions marking from RD to RT. So this can be more general here, but uh, in our work, we restrict uh, to from mapping from RD to RT with an associate metric value to producing kernel capital K. So this capital K now is a, uh, is a metric value kernel, but uh, it needs to satisfy two conditions. It has to be symmetric and also it has to be positive uh, definite. So, uh, and any VVRKHS also need to satisfy uh, reproducing property. So this is very similar to uh, what you will see uh, in, in a standard scalar valued RKHS. In order to uh, give the derive the main theorems uh, of the vector value control rights, we need first uh, define what is uh, the generalized Einstein's identity with uh, SVV. So SVV here we call uh, the vector value Stein operator here. So for suitable uh, vector value functions UT, uh, mapping from RD to RT, uh, and let U to be a collection uh, of these UTs. So each component here is, uh, is a vector value function here. And we define SVVU uh, have this form. So basically for each component of this, uh, the strange strange vector here it uh, it has it it's it has s pi t to be applied on u t such that for each component we will have its uh expectation uh, with respect to the corresponding distribution pi t to be zero for all functions uh in this uh, joint class u and for all components in this vector so of course uh, the order matters here because uh, if you change, uh, if you swap two different components uh, within this, within this vector, it would not not necessary necessary to have um, the real expectations. Uh, okay, so so and then we gave the main theorem of our work. So under some conditions, uh, the uh, the image of the Cartesian product space. Um, H capital K D. So basically, this uh, we have D H K here. Under this Stein, under this generalized uh, S V V Stein operator, it's still a vector value R K H S. But now with a new matrix value Stein kernel capital K naught. So this capital capital K naught has uh, has this form. So you can see here it actually uh, also have very similar structure to the standard scalar valued uh, Stein kernel, it involves the derivatives of the kernel and the score functions here. So, but this computation, you can see that it's very complicated because uh, this uh, strange exp exp expression can only compute for one component, one element in this, um, in, in this matrix valued kernel. Uh, so it, we can imagine that uh, it's very it's it's computationally expensive, but luckily we we can we will introduce two special cases, so that would largely reduce the computation cost of this uh, metric value Stein kernel. Okay, so in order to use uh, the functions introduced, uh, the functions in this uh, RKHS induced by the capital K naught, we need to uh, Make sure that all function, all elements in this space are square integrable, so that uh, uh, so that G can be a proper uh, uh, candidate for the control rights. So basically, when the base kernel capital K, so this base kernel capital K is a uh, is a metric value kernel here. When this kernel is bounded and uh, it has bounded derivatives, uh, and uh, we have this to be finite. For all the for all tasks uh, in the sequence, then we can uh, guarantee that uh, uh, GT is square integrable with uh, with the corresponding distribution of interest. So as I has mentioned, uh, that this expression is extremely difficult and uh, computational expensive, but it can be largely simplified. So the special case one is when this base kernel capital K is separable. So recall that a kernel K is separable if it can, if it can be written uh, in this form. 
So here, the small k here is just a standard scalar valued kernel. For instance, the square integral, uh, the square exponential kernel, uh, and uh, 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 and other popular kernels. Uh, and this b need to be positive semi definite. Um, basically, uh, this uh, this b can be regarded as some um, kernel on the responses on the response variables. So then we can. In this case, um, we we only need to know the the derivatives of the small kernel k, and we can uh, we can we can put the we can, but for all these four elements, we can it shares a common it shares a common constant, so it's a b t t prime, so this is a, a t uh, this is a corresponding element of this matrix. So in this case. Uh, the, the the expression is simplified because we no longer need to know uh, all these all of these uh, der derivatives with respect to the tt primes of this uh, capital K matrix, uh, a cap cap capital K kernel. So, and uh, actually, we can further simplify this uh, when we have uh, when we have all distributions to be identical. So. When k is separable and all the distributions are identical, we can largely simplify the expression of the capital K naught. So now you can see that the tt primes element of this uh, metric value kernel k is just b tt prime times a standard scalar valued kernel. So in this case, you can see that uh, because we have all this all distribution to be identical, so this b tt prime is just uh, represent um, uh, uh, just encode the relationship among the uh, among, among the integrand uh, evaluations among all the tasks. So this is um, one in, interpret, interpretation of this uh, matrix B. So and of course, uh, if you if we shrunk all these tasks to be one, so now suppose we only have one task. So this b t t prime the, the matrix b would just be one right then we recover the standard case of the scalar value control rights so uh, the one that's used in the control functional so from these formulations we we can find that uh, vector value control rights uh, unifies the cases of the kernel based control rights uh, that has been proposed in the past so here I'm showing the an illustration example of the matrix value starting kernel so I'm, here I'm using the, the special case one when the base kernel k is separable and we have different distributions of interest. So and the matrix B here I'm fixed to be this value. So it is a diagonal uh, matrix uh, with one on the diagonals and with zero point one on the off diagonals. And the two distribution I'm choosing is to uh, 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 standard normal and uh, and uh, a distribution that uh, is slightly different to the standard normal distributions. So the first row, uh, when the base kernel is, uh, uh, is a square exponential kernel k, and the second and third rows are the, ca are the cases when the base kernel uh, are first order polynomial kernels and the second order polynomials. So I'm projecting the evaluations of the of the of this metric value kernel along the directions uh, one one uh, so we can uh, we can see the how two component correlated here so you can find from these uh, figures uh, the two components uh, of these projections uh, are very closely related so this uh, this actually add the key of the vector value control rights because we would expect uh, those uh, vector value in the, the components of the vector value control uh, expectations that are related somehow either through the integrand themselves or through the distributions of interest. Okay, so now we, uh, since we have defined, uh, we have introduced uh, a, a, a proper uh, vector value control rights uh, function class. So now we, the, the remaining task is to select the optimal control rights from that joint class. So uh, uh, a natural objective would be uh, minimizing the variance of f minus g. Uh, if we go back to the definition of the control rights estimator, we subtract the g from f, right? 
and we want this uh, we want the we want the f minus g uh has minimum variance so that's uh that's that's the concept of control right because we want to construct estimators that has uh very tiny very small variance so this is a very natural objective for the control rights so this also apply in our case so we're also following this uh, this standard so when this control right is parameterized by uh, some parameter theta then the goal is then to find the optimal theta uh, by minimizing this objective so then um given some training data so here is data for the first integration task and here is the data for the teeth integration task um, by following the empirical loss minimization uh, with some additional uh, penalty terms on the norm of g and the norm of b so we can uh, and this g theta had this form because from the uh from the literature of the uh of the reproducing of the kernel method we know the optimal g would have this form uh uh basically a weight a weighted sum of the of these uh, metric value uh, kernel evaluations so this empirical loss minimization we can optimize them using standard uh, stochastic optimization tools like uh, sgd adam and uh, etc so uh it's often the case uh so when b is non so this then we remove we remove this term then this term, these two terms are jointly convex in terms of theta and betas. So, um, so, so all, so all uh, standard guarantees can, so they can achieve their global optimums. But so when B is, is not known before, and um, we want to learn the B jointly. So we found that the block or coordinate descent works well in practice. Um, basically is you, you you up, you up, you do one step on theta. You do one step on b. You would do one step on betas. So this is called the uh, block coordinate descent. Uh, but under some conditions, but this objective is in general is not jointly convex uh, in terms of these theta b and betas. But in some conditions, under some conditions, this objective can be shown to, that it is jointly convex uh, in all these three components. Um, this happens. Uh, this happens when you have all your distributions are identical, so it's very uh, restricted. But uh, in our experiments, we found that uh, this uh, BCG works well in practice. So uh, this will be a uh, interesting future work to do. Um, okay. So let's go back to the first toy example. So here i'm plotting the fitting curves given by the vector value control rights and the scalar value to control rights so these blue lines are the fitting uh provided by our our method well these red lines here are the fitting curve provided by previous work so you can see that um uh the the fitting of the fitting of our work uh uh, the fitting of the VVCV uh, is much better than the previous work. So, yes. And in this figure, I'm, pl I'm, I'm, I'm changing two distributions. Here, I fix the first distribution, pi 1 to be standard normal. And I gradually changing the distribution. Uh, I'm gradually changing the pi 2. So basically, I'm moving, I'm changing the variance of the pi 2 to be larger uh, and larger. So each column here, is one value uh, of this sigma squared. So you can see that uh, in all these four cases, um, the VVCV uh, has a much uh, small, uh, has a smaller uh, uh, sum of squared arrows uh, than the, that of the standard scalar value control rights. Yes. Um, so here I'm going, uh, I'm, I'm showing another example uh, that has been used in uh in the liter in the multiple related bq literature uh so this is an example taken from uh she et al uh the paper is called uh multiple related integration by billion quadra so here uh of here i'm i'm i'm, I'm comparing the vvcvs using different base kernels uh the blue lines sorry can can um the blue lines are the kernels uh, where I, is a case when we are using square exponential kernel as our base kernel. 
well the well the straight line. Other cases we are when we are using the first order polynomial, first order polynomial kernel as our base kernel. And the real lines are just the other other standard scalar value controls. I and mean, meanwhile, we are using square exponential kernel k. So in these two plots, uh, we can find that. So, uh, for, uh, so of course the the base kernel, the choice of base kernel k matters. So because if you have a look at this polynomial kernel here, it's uh, just a straight line. Uh, the fitting is uh, very poor, and and the second, uh, and then and the second. And the second point we can get is that uh, the VVCV, uh, uh, when you're using the, the same base kernel, which is the square exponential kernel K, uh, we can, the VVCV uh, still provide a better fit than that of the scalar value control rights. Okay, so it, then in these two plots, I'm, 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 showing, uh, I'm showing the values of B, so the importance of the B. So I'm showing, I'm, I have I have chosen two values for the matrix B. So when B equal to some value here, uh, so and then the second and then I meanwhile I also estimate the B during the learning during during the during the learning process of the control rights. So here you can see that um, the standard uh, scalar value control rights would would have this uh, this orange here. Well, the VVCV with learning B jointly has the lowest uh, absolute uh, integration error here. Well, we, when we fix in B, so here the two green lines uh, correspond to def two different values of the B, and we fix it, and we learn we don't learn that. So you can see that it performs worse than, than the case when we are learning the B, but it still performs uh, better than uh, than scalar value control rights. So I guess this is the, re the reason it performs slightly better than the, uh, than the, than the scalar value control rights is, I think it's just lucky because uh, of course it can be imagined if we, we, we pre if we prefix B to be a very bad value, uh, then it would of course will perform um, terrible worse than the scalar value control rights. And uh, yes, and I think that's, uh, Main conclusion we can uh, we can we can learn from this uh, this figure. So the third example is a uh, eight dimensional uh, uh, function. So this is called a boho modeling. So what we are interested in is this high fidelity high fidelity model FH. So this is a true model, and this is what we are interested in. So FL is a low fidelity model proposed uh, by some expert uh, to. It can be used as a, a very uh, roughly re, uh, replacement at this high fidelity model. So what we are interested in is the expectation of this high fidelity model with respect to all these eight random variables. So it has a, a, a practical meaning, the expected values of the water flow through some uh, random borehole using this true function. So here I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm showing the performance of the vector value control rights against the control functional, which is a standard, which is a state of the art in the past, and also the Monte Carlo estimators. So in this case, all these uh, uh, all these VVCV and the uh, CF they are using the bias estimator. So um, because, yes, uh, so to to guarantee a, a fair comparison. And here M is the sample size for each of these two uh, functions. Uh, you can see that across all these different sample sizes from 10 to 150, we found that uh, the VVCV always outperform, outperforms that of the uh, control functional estimators and the Monte Carlo estimators. Yes. Uh, Okay, the last example I'm going to show today is uh, model evidence for the dynamic system. So here I'm, we are considering a vendor pool oscillator. So this is a second order oscillator uh, has this form and it can be translated to this form for the computation. And what we can observe is a noisy version of X1s um, with, uh, with some Gaussian noise here. 
and the, 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 the model evidence of Weiss can be expressed uh, in the form of uh, the thermodynamic integration. So basically the integrand here is a log likelihood of the Y. And here this distribution of interest is, uh, is called power posteriors. So we have a temperature T here controls the, the weights of the likelihood on the log, ser on the log scale. Uh, yes, it, yes, here. Um, so, and in order to use uh, the to use the thermodynamic integration, we actually need to compute uh, 62 into expectations to estimate this model evidence. So there are a big, uh, there are thirty one expectations for the mu t, and thirty one for the variance v t because we have uh, thirty one different temperatures. So here is an example of the van der Poel's later, the red points are observations. Um, and uh, in these two figures, I'm, 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 I'm comparing the performance of the uh, scalar value control right to our vector value control rights. So here uh, you can see that across all these uh, different sample sizes, uh, vector value control rights uh, has a much more, uh, has a small mean square error. Um, okay. Okay. To summarize, uh, uh, the major contributions include uh, we propose a novel metric value Stein kernel, and uh, this novel Stein kernel uh, results in novel families of uh, vector value control rights um, because uh, we can we actually have we actually have shown that have shown that it can recover the uh, the polynomial cases. So the original uh, form of the control rights, and also we can we can also use the add uh, the sum of kernels as our base kernels. So uh, that would lead to uh, that would also recover the case of the semi the the, the, the stochastic version of the semi exact control rights uh, proposed by Lee Sauss. and also it is the first algorithm to perform uh, the multitask learning for the numerical integration by using only the evaluation of score functions uh, of the term distribution. And then simultaneously learn the relationship between the integrands and provides estimates of the corresponding integrals. Um, and uh, as a byproduct, it unifies a large range of control rights uh, proposed in the past. Okay. Um, thank you, I think that's all. Thank you, Jason. Um, yes, let's have a round of virtual or physical applauses for Jason. Um, okay, so we did finish with a bit uh, a bit earlier than usual, so we'll have a bit extra time for any questions on this interesting talk. Um, does anybody want to open the Q&A section of this talk? So just to give everyone a bit more time to think about potential questions, you mentioned, uh, this is kind of a side question, uh, you mentioned at the beginning of the talk that you wouldn't have time to cover all of the material you presented during your upgrade, that this yes. is just a portion of it. Could you just maybe spend a couple uh, of words okay. on just very high okay. level? Okay, okay, okay. So another part of my work uh, focus on meta learning. So basically, uh, uh, to be pre precise, few short learning. So that is oh, actually, wait a second, maybe I can have the, have the slides. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, sure. uh, it's, uh, yeah, I can, I can, I, I actually have a slide on that. So okay. Uh, I, I will stop sharing and sharing another file. Sorry. Yeah, of course. Yes, yeah, so we have time. Uh, I'll stop the recording here. Meanwhile. Yeah. yeah.